can't go too too fast i'll just tell you that and we can't go too fast for one reason and it's because if we go very very fast what are you what are you doing that's the next story so you know something really interesting happens when you get old you start to realize well you start to realize your cock doesn't work as much but the other thing you start to realize is that you want to relive all your childhood dreams now most times that includes well there's a lot of things that could include i mean there were those times with those chicks back in the pool back in the 90s yeah that was fun anyways yeah sorry we're talking about cars so what i was trying to say is you wanted to relive owning the cars that you once couldn't afford now you saw me do that with the 993 i bought a beautiful 993 uh, 4S and it, it's glorious and I love the car and the best part about that car and one of the reasons I love it is because it makes me feel like an old-school player like back in the day you were rich if you had a 993 because there weren't a hundred different options Lamborghini didn't even have a Gallardo so what Lamborghini did have though back in the late 90s and, and the 2000s was something called a Diablo uh, and a Diablo was so out of reach for most people because this was the pinnacle of wealth basically in in any country you were in if you had a diablo you were like you you were the king like you were that guy that had a 20 inch cock you won everyone else had a two inch cock some things don't grow some things don't grow past a certain age you know they they, they fool you though they tell you this in in school they tell you keep growing till you're like 19 but i'm pretty sure after 16 things were gone maybe because i called everybody shorty in school because i was taller in my earlier age and then i stayed short the rest of my age yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that one. But anyway, so just remember, things don't grow past a certain age. So you got to make up for the wallet to compensate for the things you're lacking in life. So what you do is you get a bigger wallet so you can buy this. And this happens to be a new, well, new for Exotic Car Hacks, 2001 Lamborghini Diablo 6 liter. Now, it's a pretty good car to own because you'll notice right away that it's probably one of the prettiest Lamborghinis ever made. Honestly, it's absolutely striking in design. I mean, striking. It is absolutely beautiful in ways that I can't even tell you. Like, spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Look at it. Just beautiful. I mean, between the carbon fiber and, and fun fact, right away, I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't know. These headlights are right out of a Nissan 300ZX. Now that's pretty fun because if you have a Nissan 300ZX, then you have the same headlights as a Lamborghini Diablo. And so while it's really hard and rare to find a Lamborghini Diablo because back in the day, people weren't that rich and they weren't able to basically create this, well, today we have this because now I can actually afford to own one. And what's actually funny is it costs a lot more than it did back in the day, but you can see that this car has stayed pretty good. This is a 2001 six liter. Uh, probably it's the last of its kind and it's, it's truly, truly amazing. I mean, it, it's beautiful because the condition was above average when I found it. And in addition to that, the options are phenomenal as well. You see the carbon fiber running through the side here. You see the carbon fiber running through the front right there and it's just absolutely striking so truly something that you can't like you can't make this up like it's as pretty as they come so why did i buy this well outside of wanting to relive my childhood dreams of owning uh, an incredible uh yellow diablo here i am with a restored yellow diablo so i'm going to tell you about this car a little bit like i said it's a 2001 it has the entire interior in carbon, which really, really accentuates, and it has yellow stitching and piping on the seats, which really makes this an incredible spec, especially for this pearl yellow here, which is beautiful. I think there were only two yellows available back then. Now, here's the other thing. I'm not a, just so you guys know, because a lot of you guys ask me on the channel, you're like, hey, PJ, like, are you, a, what, what motor is in it? What, like, I don't fucking know. I, I honestly don't care. To me, cars aren't about, like, the motor they had and, and so on and so forth. I get like it's fast and shit, but this isn't that fast because it's old. But what I'm trying to say is like, 
I, I don't really know the stuff like if it's got this kind of exhaust from back in the day or if it has these, what does it mean to have a V12 and how many horsepower they make? Like, no idea, honestly. Like, absolutely no idea. What I do know, though, is that the values in the Diablos have been going to the roof and it's the next car that's going to explode since the Countach literally went from 300 to 800 to now almost a million versus the Diablo is the last one left as the Mercy started rising that hadn't really taken that sky high up. And I think down the road in the next maybe six to 12 months, this might be like a seven, 800K car as well, which is what I'm basically betting on because you hardly can buy a Diablo today anywhere near 500K, let alone one that's actually in good shape pretty functional, doesn't have a check inch line, doesn't need $100,000 in repairs immediately. This needed about $30,000 in repairs. Everything from sticky buttons were redone, uh, the seals around the doors, the, the water seals, etc., and everything from the service, the spark plugs, uh, the radio was redone and everything was brought back to spec. Even the calipers uh, were originally black and then were painted silver and looked awful. And now we're repainted black again. And now you have this beautiful, original fantastic and amazing car it's just spectacular and and i think that for being as old as a 2001 it's in fantastic shape i mean just like i had found the 993 this car is as good of a shape of a car you're going to find on the market with the leather not coming off the dash you know the interior not looking like it's 50 years old and it sports an original five speed and we're going to go for a little drive so you can see how crazy this car is but it's nothing like you'd expect. And one of the reasons I don't like driving older cars is they're just not as exciting. Like if you actually look at the cars, they're just not that great. Like once you get in them, everything's kind of like weird and feels flimsy because it's older. And, and one of the things I, I try to tell people is that once you have cars like the ones I have, you rarely and hardly want to drive something like this because it doesn't just bring the same level of excitement as some of the newer stuff. It has a very good analog feel to it and works fine but it doesn't give you the same sensation as an SVJ or something that just is so much more exciting, reliable, and, and, and just goes there. But there's something about a gated manual, we know that. There's something about an older sitting position, Mercy or Diablo, which is even worse than the Diablo than the Mercy, but really interesting altogether. And we're gonna go for a drive so you can kind of see how that plays very differently than what I'd call a conventional uh, Lamborghini. But, one of the best parts about owning a car like this and one of my favorite aspects of, of experiencing a car like this is that you get a really, good, a really good idea by seeing that. You get a really good idea of how much the brand has evolved through the years. You get to see like from the Countach to the Diablo to the Murcielago to the Aventador, what a huge improvement year after year Lamborghini has made and how far it's come, not only as a company, but from a design standpoint and excitement standpoint. And when you watch these cars, you start to see the evolution of these V12s through time, and they are just spectacular. So let's go for a drive together, and then from there we can kind of figure out the best reason why the Diablo could still be the hidden gem that will eventually bring a million dollars. Let's go for a drive. All right, guys, so we're gonna go for a little drive, and one of the things you'll notice is the doors don't go up as much as some of these other cars, like the later generations. You kinda gotta jump in and sit in the car, even though I'm not that big of a guy. So now, here we are, and the first thing you'll notice immediately is how far you're from this. So you're used to like driving much closer, and the steering wheel is like basically an entire foot away from the, from the dash, which is different. So we're gonna put this in. Okay, here we go. There we go. And we hear Reggie cracking the seats as he moves. It's, yeah, it's, it's painful sometimes. We're now taking applications for midgets that want to fit in cars with me in case uh, you have video skills. Uh, yeah, it's a tough work environment. But anyways, let's go into this. So the other thing you'll notice, doors are incredibly heavy and annoying and they often don't wanna latch because they don't want to move. So you gotta keep getting them at this angle. There you go. And then you eventually get them down. Okay, so here we are down. Now, some basic things right away that you notice with this car. So the cool part is the AC actually works. We put a new AC compressor in it, everything works great. Five-speed transmission, all your little buttons here for the windows, the locks and everything. We've had all that done, redone because you had a lot of uh, stickies here, just naturally. Alpine sound system, very interesting because 
in back in the day, if you're an old school dude and you lived in through the 90s and the 2000s, this was like how you were rich. You had one of these head units that was like two grand and you were like, Poof. so right away, you'll notice some key things in the car. The handbrakes on this side, just like Aston Martins. And a lot of your things in this little strip here basically control like check engine light, this and that. And then it, that's digital. Everything else is basically analog which is cool. You got a little weird little clock thing going on here and your regular, you know, all of your regular basically gauges and stuff. So the cars, the thing with old cars is they don't run as good as new cars. And there's a couple of problems with that. I can't even find the belt in this fucking thing. Okay, where's the belt? It's on this side. Now you're gonna realize that I've never actually driven this car, meaning like this is the first time I'm getting in it. I bought it just because I wanted one and super uncomfortable with the belt again, but whatever. Reverse belts, no big deal. We're gonna go for a drive and see if the Diablo is still cool or kind of trash. You'll notice the shifter here goes reverse one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you know, you're used to this basically one being up top and reverse being all the way on this side and later shifters. So it takes a moment to get used to it, but very, very cool car nonetheless. Uh, we can't go too, too fast, I'll just tell you that. And we can't go too fast for one reason. And it's because if we go very, very fast, what are you, what are you doing? That's the cunt next door. She's like fucking, people are like terrible. There's just terrible people that like go next door. Like fucking, you know, like I think Jesus said like, love thy neighbor or some shit, but that's one of the neighbors that you don't give a fuck about that you hope against in a car accident because they're morons. But anyways, so like the main thing I was talking about, what, what is wrong with you? Stay focused, we're here. Yeah, we're here, okay? All right. And you see, look, Reggie, this is amazing. The belt isn't even ringing, yeah? I think the sensor knows the weight ratio is impossible for it to be a human, right? So the car is like in the 20, two, 2000s. We didn't have humans that were this heavy. Probably like 150. Like 165. You weigh 150? I'm like 165. On what planet? With what gravitational like, like pull? 165. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. On a good day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Add like 100 pounds to that. But anyways, so we can't go too fast, like I was saying, because the tires are old. They're not bad. They're just old. And because they're old, we don't want the same thing that happened to Paul Walker to happen because we don't get anything. But one of the things you'll notice immediately with these cars, these older cars, is that you, you get the exciting analog drive and everything else, but it, it's just so lacking power and it's put so much effort to make power, which is, it's cool, it's cool, it's interesting, listen, but it doesn't give you confidence on the road. Something that you get with a lot of New York cars with the tech and the all wheel drive systems and everything. And it just feels much better than these, than these cars. So this car becomes ultimately very very different and one thing that's funny is you have these little things on the mirrors we used to have these back in the day when you had these mirrors that, that just the way they were to, to see your blind spot give these little circles whatever it's really cute I forget what it's like to basically own a car in the 2000s when the era was just much simpler and just just more more of a normal time you know the AC is cold everything's working as always so that part's good you know the feel of the car is more solid than you know, a car that's been abandoned or not cared for, but the alignment's still off, so it's gonna go back to the shop to get complete, but the gated part of it definitely feels good in the seating position is fantastic. I think it, what it really comes down to is back in the day, you, you, they didn't really think shit true when it came to building cars, so they built them in a way that just worked for the moment. They didn't build them for the convenience or what the driver would do. That was one of the things I loved the most back then because they were building cars the way they intended to build them, not the way they intended to win a customer over. And I think that's so important because back in the day, they were basically making cars the way they believed cars should be made. And that was such a more exciting time uh, in automotive history, in my opinion, than catering cars to people who don't understand them uh, and, and kind of trying to win market share and stuff, stuff that you don't see as, you know, you see as a issue today, but you didn't see as an issue back then because manufacturers had so few options to pick from. Inside the cabin, you can hear everything like super loud, a little bit of crackling there and there from the leather being older and stuff. But uh, in general, fantastic drive. Uh, very, very cool car altogether. Like the drive is phenomenal. Uh, again, I can't go like super fast, so I can't give you one of these expressions like I'm having an orgasm while I'm driving, like, oh, ah, 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 it's so fast. Because it's one, why are you laughing at you again? Why are you nodding your head? Like, I always like judges me for, for these things. I think, you know, the judgment is on you. You know, we're talking about Jesus earlier, it's a bad thing. But anyway, so we're back to this uh, 
idea of, again, like I was saying, I can't do one of those orgasm videos that gives you a sense that I'm super excited about driving my car because I don't want to die. But outside of that, uh, I think it's, pretty, it's a pretty solid driving car. And I'm literally experiencing with you guys here for the first time. You can hear everything going on here on the road and blinkers, everything. You feel it, huh? You hear that? I just wanna make sure nothing blows up while I'm driving, but anyways, you can really, really feel it. You can feel the engine because that this is one of my biggest uh, things with new cars is the power is so linear across the board and with older cars it, because it's analog you literally feel the motor going through its little phases and the cylinders firing and stuff and it's really cool but yeah overall if you're trying to buy a diablo i'd say there's a couple of things you need to know because i kind of researched this on my own uh it, it's best to either buy one of the first cars or the last car so basically buy 2001 like this uh, the 6.0 is like super awesome because this is basically a, a Lamborghini Di uh, Murcielago in a Diablo shell, which is fantastic again. Uh, and I think that does that works really, really well for one simple reason. And it's because you're getting like, I always say you're getting the best of the newer stuff, even though it's still old as fuck now, but you're getting in a way still the old traditional design that so many people are gonna recognize on the road. And this is one of the best colors to do it in. So. It's harder to find a Diablo these days, but if you can get one, you'll probably need to spend like 50 grand or so just restoring some of the things. And before you go, oh, well, that's a lot of money to restore a car. I mean, you have to understand, once you start buying these older cars, they're just 20 years old. Like, like it has nothing to do with the car being mistreated. This car was driven 3,000 miles a year for 20 years. You know, like, when it, not even, it's got like 20,000 miles, like 1,000 miles a year, 1,500 miles at the most, you know? So it's not, that much you know it's not that bad to have 26 30 thousand miles and i would recommend it heavily uh to not buy a car with 2,000 miles or anything because you really don't know if it even works because it's never been driven uh or checked to work or not get cars that have some type of service record or someone cared for at least driven them a little bit make sure they've been left on a tender and the batteries aren't dead but even if they are batteries aren't necessarily that expensive i will say you'll have a struggle finding tires so if you have a car that is, is bad on tires, meaning the tires are completely fucked, you're gonna be fucked because you're not gonna be able to buy anything uh, to replace them with because everything's on back order, special order, and doesn't exist for like a year. Uh, so one of the tricks is to buy uh, a Diablo and Port Murcielago tires on it uh, temporarily while saving the real ones so you can at least find tires out there on a Mercy. It's the same like wheel thing. You can just bolt them and swap them. But anyways, that is my review of the Lamborghini Diablo that has been just added to the collection. Now, I did not buy this car to hold it forever. Uh, I bought it because I wanted to restore it and I wanted to sell it, meaning I wanted to post it on BAT or something and see if I could make some money off of it and more as a flip. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to flip now. I might try to sell it. If it doesn't bring the money I want, I may just park it for a couple of years and then bring it back out and wait till the market's up to a million bucks and just get rid of it at that point. But I think it's a spectacular looking car and one of the best looking Lamborghinis that has ever existed in history, in my opinion, uh, even though it has 300 ZX tail lights. So if you wanna learn again, how to leverage cars, enjoy them, not lose money on them. And in many cases actually make money like cases like this, especially if you like more collector grade investment cars, uh, then make sure you click the free training in the video. It's available right in the link and you'll be able to take a free training that'll teach you how to turn a cars into alternative asset investments. And of course, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and tell me what you think of the color pick on uh, the Exotic Car Hacks Diablo. So again, we'll see how it goes. More reviews and more updates on this later. Talk to you guys soon.